Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jake and today I'll be walking you through the process of building and painting a gaming and display table like the one I did for the storefront of Michigan Toy Soldier. Alright, first things first, along with anything in life there always needs to be a plan. Now for this one you'll recognize the Warhound that I did from a previous video and in this case I'm just taking it and putting it on my display board or the piece of board and mapping out the different elements of where I want things to be. Now the entire process behind this is more or less to create a space to display the models as well as even play some small skirmish games. Along with using different materials, I also got to use the new Army Painter box, the Game Master version, or I think this one it's the Dungeon Master. It's a kit that allows people who have never made display boards or gaming tables to have a supply base to work from when they want to create their own um, either a diorama or a gaming table they want to use for an event. The longest part of this build was literally mapping out where I wanted things to be and then cutting it out. The trick to building a board like this is that you can always build up on it, but you can't necessarily go down. There's only a certain depth you can do before you hit the bottom of that wooden piece that I was at. So I took a time to really sit and think about it and also cut things correctly if I wanted it to be a puddle or a trench or some sort of land feature. And then I mapped it, cut it with my blade there, and then eventually took the hot wire cutter that came with the Army Painter set and went about to really smooth and define the edges of like say the craters or the puddles or the trench and earthworks I had later on. Overall this portion of the process is probably the longest element to get through because it is quite messy especially with the styrofoam bits going everywhere and to keep uh, you know cutting and then recutting measuring just to double check everything's fitting and then maybe having some last second changes to you know put on the board itself and with that the board is all set and ready for me to go and of course stella had a lot of fun watching me in this entire thing and getting into the styrofoam now creating this display board slash playing board i had a solve a problem with it being durable but also looking realistic with the way that the ground uh, presented itself. So I took some of my AK paste, mixed in some different gravel bits, some different, uh, like you can see some roots and sticks there, and created a nice paste texture to get all over the board. I added a little bit of the mud color in there too. I could have just used some paint but I liked the consistency that the AK product here has. So once that was ready, I got it all ground up added a little bit more some scale uh, size rocks that came with that army painter kit and more or less created like a peanut butter texture that would slather on and you know basically drywalled the board <laughs> so once i had my structures in place glued them down i started working that mud mixture all around the different features of the board making sure to really get it in there and tuck it in there onto the foam the nice thing about it is that it dries really quick. And once you'll see that it starts to get that sheen there, it means that the moisture is evaporating out of the mix. You'll start to see it's, you know, start to peak in some spots. So what I do is I take a paper towel here and start eliminating those peaks. So that way it doesn't look like I just took, literally took a product and slathered it on the, uh, the board there. So it creates more of a natural texture. It, doesn't look like it's just, you know, more or less frosting slathered on a, a board like this. So it really helps even it out. And over the course of a few hours, I went back ever so often with a hairdryer and also another paper towel to really smooth out and get that peaking effect off the mud and just work from there. Now 
Now once my earthworks were all in place, it was time for me to go about and add some water effects. To do that, I took this AK paste and I wanted to create the look of some really nasty contaminated puddles of water or sludge or whatever else it could be and put it around the model base, especially in this case the Warhound to make it look like it was submerged at one point. I got the idea uh, after looking at some different battlefield photos of some World War II and World War I where water becomes contaminated by the sheer amount of artillery and propellant used with the artillery and it more or less creates a toxic sludge in all the puddles that are present. As you can see, I'm working here in layers. Once that gel medium from AK was put in place, I took some realistic water, mixed it with a little bit of pigment, and added that on top of the AK gel paste. Once it dries, it creates a nice sense of depth, and it looks really convincing. Another thing to note though too, between the gel and the realistic water here is that they both dry really durably. So people can touch it or models can touch it and it won't get destroyed very easily. And you'll see here that I take the hair dryer and remove all the bubbles out that way. It's okay to keep a little bit of bubbles in there too because it creates a little bit of a dimension that, you know, that's, I don't know, not that healthy to be in or around. But uh, typically I will, whenever I'm using a product like this, take a hair dryer and remove the bubbles that way. Once I had the puddles in place, it was time for me to go around and add some very slight, you know, look and texture as well as some color to the buildings there. I don't want them to stand out too much because I want them to look like they've been there a while. So I used a lot of muted tones, um, like a lot of grays, and then I even came back in with the light sand color to really unify it with the entire scene itself. Then after the buildings were done, I went and took a dry brush and earth color by ammo and went around to create different areas of interest, different textures, or I should say colors, to highlight the textures and some adds a little bit of variation around the board. I also use it to unify both the board and the buildings together so they all looked like they're part of the same you know, scene, they're not just thrown in there randomly. After I had my tones established, I took some, some gamer's grass or any real graph tufts that I had on hand and put them around in various locations. I don't want to really saturate the board with this because obviously this is a, you know, a ground area that's been you know, more or less destroyed. So there wouldn't be that much vegetation left, but I wanted some poking through just to kind of give the board a little bit of variation. So I put that around different objects and just went from there. It creates you know some variety in the board and you know, it just breaks up a bit. And so then once the vegetation was in place, I made a little mixture here of the different AK products and I wanted to create a nice fading effect to make it look like it, you know, the ground changes both in consistency and also in color. And it creates a nice variation from place to place. Look like some areas are drying up, some are more wet, and it really adds a little more depth to the overall look of the, the display board. And after I add a little bit more of that depth, I went back with some puddles by AK. And I wanted to make the trench look like it's pretty saturated with water too, because you know, in World War I, or any trench um, for the matter, when it was used in like Vietnam or World War II even, puddles would accumulate everywhere. So I want to really replicate that, uh, that, that effect and you know, made it look like it's been just mucky and terrible to walk through. And there we go. That project was a lot of fun to do. I've never really done a, a large display board like this. I know it's, you know, it, it's something great to do. I want to make one for my own bolt action army eventually. It was a fun and rewarding project. So with that, this project is done. If you feel inclined, please like and subscribe to the channel. And um, I look forward to doing some more. Have a great one.